everybody, this is Susie and Maver, and I am here again playing uh, Epiphany! <laughs> that one. Um, so we just opened the chest, so we're gonna go and look in and find our mission. Another note. And a long one at that. Great! <sighs> My darling, I'm gonna I'm gonna open the door in hopes that nobody comes to interrupt me. Okay. My darling Elizabeth, I cannot begin to imagine the suffering you have endured these past 20 years, or the anger you harbor towards me for causing it. It is gnawing my soul every second of every minute of every hour of every day. At night, as I lay asleep in my bed, I am consumed with the nightmarish visions of that awful day. In these dreams, no matter what I do, I cannot prevent the inevitable. I wake up drenched in perspiration, delirious, screaming. <clears throat> For both our sakes and for Anna's, I must use this tablet. It is the only way. In doing so, I risk two possibilities th that I can see. The first is exile. The second is death. Either is preferable to this hell I have been living through in this old, dusty, empty house. A prison of isolation and despair surrounded by the medieval trinkets I once so cherished. I'm getting a drink because I really need water. Hopefully that helps. You've seen what the tablet can do. Seen its transformative powers, my experiments have revealed much of the tablet's secrets. Though many still remain in shadow beyond the view of my comprehension. More importantly, however, is my belief that after all this time, I know what I must do. I must take that journey into the unknown. What I cannot know is if the door swings both ways. And this is why I need you, Elizabeth. If I pass into that other world and find I am not able to return, I will need you to open the gate from this side. To do that, I will need you to access the lower chamber. I'll get to that in a moment. One mistake I made sure never to duplicate was believing the lower chamber needed no further security than a single lock. In your 20 year absence, I have made absolutely sure no one could possibly stumble upon it again. I have put my love for gadgetry to good use. And my system, while convoluted and tedious at times, will ensure the tablet's safety. This is good, because he's explaining why you have to go back and forth and do all this crap. Um, you always thought me paranoid, Elizabeth, and I do not deny it, but it's for the protection of all that we hold dear of all we hold dear that I remain vigilant in shielding the artifact from the rest of humanity. Who would, who would most certainly abuse its powers of to the destruction of our species. Despite my precautions, I fear there are those who suspect what is locked away below the manor. On several occasions past sunset, I have seen movement in the surrounding hills and silhouettes peering into my windows. I believe someone is watching me. Someone who knows about the tablet. The door to the lower chamber is locked by eight switches. For obvious reasons, I dare not re reveal the code to the third floor switch room lest wayward eyes find these instructions. I've gone to great lengths to hide the codes around the estate, but I have left you sufficient clues to find them. Given your knowledge of this place, unraveling the clues should be a relatively easy task for you to do. That said, I have made several modifications to the manor and grounds over the years, secret rooms and switches, and what have, and what have you. I will do my best to guide you to these locations, starting with the two towers I built just south of the manor. I used these structures to provide us with running water and electricity, but I have reconfigured them to hide the solutions for four of the eight switches. Locate the hidden room marked on the enclosed map and direct the power to each tower to gain entry. Please note that I have added on an additional measure of security to gain access to the switch room on the third floor. You remember Anna's song, don't you? I no longer have the music box, but I doubt you have forgotten the metal melody. Use it to gain access to the room. I will find- you will find further instructions there. I know you can never forgive me for what happened on that terrible day, but there is- but if there is any chance of undoing the damage I have done, this is it, Elizabeth. Please believe in me. I can get it back. So Elizabeth's room is the one to power room. Is the- the secret power room. Okay. 57 amps and 222 degrees Celsius. Picked up the note from the chest. A hidden room? Exile, death, a magical tablet? What happened here? <laughs> exactly, darling. Um. What about... Getting into the tower, though. This is Anna's room. 
Let's try and find the secret room in Elizabeth's room really quick. So there's a secret room over here. So, try searching everything. There's a copy of Gate Great Gaps Gatsby. Um, does the postcard have anything to do with it? Um, no? Is there a switch in the bottom of this trash can? Okay... Um... No secret switch in the chimney? No? Uh, da -da. Da -da. There's nothing! Should I just check the wall? It's just... So... I gotta get into the... No, the towers. <clears throat> but to do that I need a code. And I don't know that I know that code. Whee! Let's go down to the towers. See if we can find any clues. Well, I mean, there was the... Crosshairs Moon dot target, but... <sighs> Crosshairs Moon target... Moon target... This is a triangle. What is that supposed to mean? Does anyone know? Crosshairs Moon target... Target moon or moon crosser's moon target. I, I'll just I'll focus on crosser's moon target first. Hmm. Are the statues? Nope. Do I have to do more reading? Do I have to go back to that library and do more reading? Frickin'. Let's go try reading in the library. I'll be back. Oh, 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 it's circled! Oh, I'm so dumb! There's a red circle around part of the room, meaning that I have to enter it not from Elizabeth's room, I have to enter it from out here. Behind the painting? No. Behind the table. Can I push the table? No? Will you guys move? No? Um... Look at that! There's a button hidden in the wood paneling! Yes! <gasps> Ooh. Crosshairs. Moon. Target. Now there's power. Okay. That's a lot better. So crosshairs moon target. Let's go. Run. I mean, you you walk pretty fast, so I guess you're okay. Who needs a gym membership when you walk as fast as you do? The the crosshairs moon target was this one, right? Yeah. Sweet. Cool. I made it in one place. There's a shiny. Press the button with the flame icon on it? I don't know if I want to. PSI, PSI temp. I need to make it 222, two, two, so 350 PSI. Um. The valve. No. Labeled PSI. Yes, yeah, set the PSI to 3. 50. Hmm, the gauge isn't moving. Yeah, we want the PSI at 350 because that's 222. Two, two. Pressure cooker calibration off by negative 5 PSI. Okay, so. So 355. Uh, nothing seems to be happening. 
Okay, I filled it. Yeah, I have a tub of water. Yes. To three fifty. So to no, 355. Okay, well. Oh, uh, sure. Why not turn the valve? Oh, that's the gas for the fire. Yeah. The fire is lit! Yes, now set the PSI. It's 350 and then... Well, something happened. Good or bad, I can't stay. There's a button here. Reading temp! Error. Yeah. Okay. So the PSI to 355. Well, something happened, good or bad, I can't stay. Yes. Reading temp. Oh, and in case you guys are wondering where I got the 222 degrees Celsius, it's from the note. Um. Ooh! An old journal with initials- Oh, great! More reading! Hard to believe I filled an entire journal and had to start a new one. Elizabeth is right. There's something cathartic about writing my thoughts down on paper. It makes them more permanent. Still find it difficult to do- to do it with any semblance of regularity, but nevertheless, pouring out my heart and soul into page has become almost a necessity for me. One day when I am old and gray, I will look back at these ramblings and hopefully find some insight into the ever-ending state of the human brain. Ever-evolving. Or maybe I'll just laugh at what a naive fool I was. The handle on Alice and his music box broke, and I momentarily believed myself free of its talents. But then there was Elizabeth swooping in to save the day. It seems the fix was so simple she didn't even have to take it into town. Ah, if only Anna had brought it to me first, I could have taken it to the repair shop, where someone could have misplaced it, and then I wouldn't have to hear that song ever again. Of course I'm being too harsh. It's a catchy little number. If only Anna weren't so fond of it. The soundtrack to my life has become an endless loop of... Uh, da 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 da... Uh, da, 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 da. I don't know, something like that. Perhaps I should write that. Lowercase d, capital D, capital D A, capital D, lowercase d, capital D, lowercase d. Alright. Another successful Christmas. Another belly full of eggnog and cognac and father Christmas shaped cookies. Anna seemed to be enjoying the antique iron chest we gave her this year. That sucker is a beast. I bet it could survive a nuclear blast. I had it fitted with a combination lock so that she can keep her most prized secrets locked inside, away from us grown-ups. Of course, I'm the one who set the combination, but she hasn't quite figured that out yet. Let's see how long before she comes to me asking to change it. It is truly astounding the, sen the serpentine path of a woman's line of questioning can take to extract the answer she's seeking from another person. Elizabeth came into the office today to tell me lunch was ready. And, as an aside, mentioned that Anna was out back by herself making holes with her little shovel. I said something about how she'd already been bitten by the digging bug, and Elizabeth reminded me that we hadn't gone digging anywhere together since we found the tablet on the Windy Hilltop seven years ago. I thought that was the point she was getting at, that we had become so focused on the origin of the tablet in the chamber below the, ho the house that we had lost sight of why we both came became archaeologists in the first place. But as usual, I was wrong. What she really wanted to know was whether or not I was interested in having another child. I probably should not have said that Anna was enough of a handful that two rugrats running around would overwhelm us, because it escalated into a debate that it 
this escalated into an argument that escalated into Elizabeth walking out in a half and leaving me here in the office all day to stew in my guilt. I'll probably head down to the pub tonight to give her some space. I'm not opposed to spawning another little Arzeno, but right now is not the time. I met a man down at the pub village yesterday, an older gentleman, maybe late 50s, early 60s. Very enthusiastic about the history of the area. We got to talking, and next I know there are there are nine or ten empty pint glasses on the table. It seems I have invited him to come and have a look at our, our old graveyard behind the house. Even though I was so drunk, I hardly even remember telling him about it. I think I was so excited to find someone in the area other than Elizabeth who had an interest in medieval history and archaeology. In any case, it'll be nice to have someone else around to talk to when Elizabeth is busy. Hopefully they'll find a new friend in this Ronald, in this Ronald Keel fellow. Ronald's come by for the third time this week. He had a fabulous pair of Hellenistic Greeks in superb condition to show me. That got Elizabeth going on her favorite subject, Greek mythology. And after that, I couldn't get in a word edgewise. I left the two of them in their chatter and said, Ronald is now her husband. And fetched another bottle of wine from the kitchen. When I returned, Elizabeth was shrieking with laughter. The only time I made her laugh like that is when I trip over my shoelaces and tumble down the stairs. Time to up my game. Note to self, call the statue wholesaler and see what sort of inventory he's got. The front yard is looking a bit bare and could use some decor. Maybe some Greek goddesses. Elizabeth would like that. Somehow, Anna found her way down to the lower chamber while I was working there. I allowed her to stay while I continued digging. She saw the minerals I had already under in my wagon and wanted to play with them. I told her no, which drove her from the chamber sobbing. Where did she get these wild mood swings? Oh wait, now I remember. The bitterly cold it's a bitterly cold Christmas this year. Ronald hiked up for dinner despite the heavy snow on the trails in the village. He said he procured a suit of mail circa fifteen oh three and an even older jacket plates with its original stitching. Then to my surprise, he said he was giving them to me us as a Christmas gift. I could not accept such a priceless pair of artifacts, but he insisted. He said it would look good next to the others in the house. My collection grows, as does my astonishment with Ronald's ability to find such incredible pieces. I suspect he must be independently wealthy, because how else could he have acquired items valued as highly as these? Picked up journal number two. Let's see how long- Oh my gosh, I've been recording for 20 minutes! That's way too long! Alright, we solved the puzzle, guys! Yay! Thank you guys so much for watching, I hope you enjoyed this episode as much as I did, and next time we will see what this note in the scrap of paper is. Bye! Uh, so do I want to continue going upstairs, or do I want to go into the shed? Because I have a feeling that continuing upstairs will just have a lot more reading. So we're gonna go down to the shed, because, gosh darn it. I have a feeling that I'm going to regret this, but I don't care right now.